Learn about breathing life into your characters. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Wordsmith on Oak Street in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 13th annual South Carolina Writers Workshop Writing Conference, which was held here last month at the Ocean Creek Resort. And we're visiting with Mary Eady, the president of the Wordsmith. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much again for having us in this week. We have had such a superstar lineup, and of course, uh, tomorrow as well as Monday and Tuesday and today to get you and Dr. Ballin in is truly a treat. Well, we're so glad to have more than 200 writers here for this event and many others keeping in touch with us by getting the tapes after the fact through the website. Yes, that's right. South Carolina Writers, SCWriters.com. SCWriters.com. Okay. Is that, how long has that website been up? It's been up a few years? Just a couple of years. Right, right. Very popular. I know they had a heck of a lot of folks hitting it to, uh, last month for the conference. When did you first get the idea for writing a novel, Mary? At the South Carolina Writers Conference a couple of years ago, with a background in journalism, I really didn't think much about writing fiction until I sat in on Gwen Hunter's workshop, of course, and she introduced me to the concept. But fiction, poetry, now I'm thinking maybe, maybe a screenplay would be in the future. And that's one reason I'm so excited that Dr. Rachel Ballin is going to be with us. She knows so much about creating characters from the inside out. You know, it takes more than one strong character to make a good screenplay or novel. Mm -hmm. You have to have your minor characters, your villain has to be believable, has to be somebody that you could like and hate all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So she will explore how to do that in this segment. Yeah, speaking of that, Mary, what kind of story have you written? I know you mentioned that a little bit yesterday when, you were, when we were with Gwen before starting in. But can you summarize again real quick a little bit about the, the piece? My book is Conflicts of Interest, mm -hmm. and it is in the process of being sold in New York now. It is a political suspense, romantic suspense kind of novel with a lot of action, a murder, and a kidnapping, and it's all based in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Wow. And so it's pretty exciting. And the characters, of course, are from everywhere. Myrtle Beach is a great crossroads for so many different kinds of people. People come to play golf, they come to vacation, and they get caught up in political suspense. Mm -hmm. Mary, how does one, that, that's so exciting, how does one begin a book? Beginning a book, many people do it different ways. Some people sit down and outline the first chapter all the way through to the end. Other people just start writing somewhere in the middle and then the story takes shape. Uh, I'm not big on outlining. Uh, I think the characters have to speak to me. They have to, I think about them and develop them, and they tell me how they feel, and then it just sort of comes that way. So I'm a pretty spontaneous kind of writer. And if someone has an idea for a story, where, where do they begin? Well, the best place to begin is with what comes to you first. Uh, Anne Lamott, a great writer, said, write a report bird by bird, frame by frame, idea by idea. Don't think about the whole book. It's just too daunting to write a whole book. Take one chapter, one concept, one character, and say, this is this character on this day, at this moment, in this point of conflict, and just describe that. That's doable. That's a great, those are great words, those are great words. As a member of the South Carolina Writers Workshop, Mary, can you share real quick with the viewers what the organi organization's about and how they might help an aspiring writer? Yes, Greg. The South Carolina Writers Workshop is sponsored in part by the State Arts Commission, in part by member dues, and in part by great benefactors who believe in the arts. And what the workshop does is it sponsors workshops regionally throughout the year, throughout the state, and brings in famous writers or producers to conduct little mini workshops for one or two days at different places. And the other thing we do is this big uh, annual conference here in Myrtle Beach that, that brings so many writers really from all over the world to our area. Mm -hmm. You mentioned our next guest, Mary, Dr. Rachel Ballin. 
who I believe is a psychotherapist. What does that expertise as a psychotherapist really do to help bring to the literary groups? You know, I had wondered that myself, but then when I had a chance to hear her speak at the Writers' Conference, what I saw is that Dr. Ballin specializes in character development. Good characters, bad characters, primary, secondary characters. She challenges the writer to think in depth about each character so that the writer can bring out the best and worst at the right times in the right places in the novel or in the screenplay. And she um, has a number of books out, and she herself is a novelist, so she knows what it's like to engage in the creative process. How exciting. Learn about character development. We'll be visiting with Dr. Rachel Ballin, coming up next on Carolina People. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Wordsmith on Oak Street in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 13th annual South Carolina Writers Workshop Writing Conference, which was held last month at the Ocean Creek Resort. And we're visiting with Dr. Rachel Ballin, a psychotherapist, author, and instructor. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Ballin. Do you mind if we call you Rachel? Oh, I'd love that. Ah, yeah. great. Yeah. You all made the the trip out last month for the, the amazing conference yes. which was held at Ocean Creek, how was it? Oh, it was great and Ocean Creek is so beautiful and yeah. Myrtle Beach is so beautiful. Was this your first time to Myrtle first Beach? First time. You're kidding. It won't be my last. Good. Believe me. Absolutely. I loved it. I love it. And this being the 13th annual conference, there should be quite a few more uh, in the many years to come. Oh, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll be lucky and get invited again. Who yes, knows? Rachel. Know. Please share with the viewers a little about uh, how you've used psychotherapy as uh, how that's factored into your writing. Into my own writing? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I believe that all good writing comes from someone's psyche and that if people are really good writers and not afraid to reveal who they really are, that their psychology comes through, their beliefs and their values and all the things that uh, make up who they are, comes, their personality comes mm -hmm. through. Uh, actually, I was a poet and uh, I took this wonderful course called Poetry and the Therapeutic Experience at UCLA about 25 years ago. And I loved it because it was taught by a professor of English and a professor of psychology, mm -hmm. and a doctor of psychology. And he used his poetry to get into feelings. And I thought, oh, this is so wonderful. So I started studying with him. And I was an English major from Penn State. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that I couldn't do this long without becoming a therapist if I wanted to be a poetry therapist. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only do so much with a poem, but you have to know how to interpret it. So if somebody were feeling depressed or they didn't know what turn to take in their career, you might read the poem uh, by Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken, mm -hmm. and it talks about making decisions. So that's when I went back to school and got my master's degree in therapy and was using therapy and poetry as a means to get into people's feelings. So that's how it started. How fascinating. Yeah. How fascinating. Obviously, you a big focus now is using writing as a therapy for healing yes. in that aspect. What prompted you to use this as a treatment tool? Was it just as basic as that? It, early well, I started with that right. and then in my own therapy practice uh, I also was at the same time doing screenwriting and I saw that the people who I taught in screenwriting were having much more success in ther than the therapy patients when they would write a personal screenplay and put their feelings into it, let's say a coming of age story or a story of something about their past, when they wrote this, well like, like Conroy, Pat Conroy who writes all about himself, sure. and I saw that they were having many more breakthroughs than people in therapy who were talking. And so the writing gets you into another level, a very deeper level, and you really get to the truth of who you are. Mm. So I started using writing not writing like write a book or write a screenplay, but with people who are non-writers, I would tell them to write something if something bothered them, to write about it, and journal write, 
and right. write in your journal as quickly as you can without worrying about commas or punctuation, about language. Just write. And when you write from this place without stopping at a certain amount of time, you bypass the uh, left brain and you really get into the truth of who you are. Huh. Because when we talk, we edit everything we say. Just like when you meet people, you are censoring yourself or editing sure. yourself all the time sure. or thinking, am I making an impression? When you write as quickly as you can without stopping, uh, you bypass the censor in yourself. And what's being written is, is purely for the writer, him yes. or herself. For example, if a person comes to see me for therapy and I see that they're all in their head and uh, I'll give you an example this man was trying to search for his father he didn't know who his father was so when he found out who his father was he was passed off as his uncle this is when he was a young man when so I had him write about that and we worked on that he'd write something different every week and it isn't necessarily write a letter you know write a scene and change the scene Mm -hmm. So if you were betrayed, let's say, by somebody who said he was your uncle and he was really your father, and the man is now dead, you can't very well have a confrontation. But I had him write a scene and have him say all the things that he never got to say, or have him do all the things that he never got to do. And people change that way, because as a child you're helpless. But when you rewrite the story and change it, mm -hmm. then you are creating new and we're empowering yourself. Yes. And you also are creating new attitudes so you're not the victim. And I've been working on a book for a long time about this called Happy Endings, Change Your Story, Change Your Life. And like if someone was abused, let's say someone was beaten as a mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. by the wicked stepmother, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, you can't change that. That happens. So a person carries that with them all their life and they feel victimized. They feel that they're a loser, whatever. You can't change what happened, but I have them write the story as it happened. And usually they'll cry when they remember or they'll get angry. And I'll say, okay, now write the story, but change it. Fight back. Grab the cat of nine tails or grab the cooking spoon or grab right. whatever and change the story and people suddenly have empowered themselves. So writing, to me, is probably the most powerful tool there is for healing, as well as writing for pleasure. And this can be used in basic relationships as well. I mean, this, uh, this has been taken e even outside. I guess it's been commercialized. We've seen this at some level. The, uh, the men are from Mars, women are from Venus, right. where the, the, the author talks about writing a love letter to yourself when you haven't gotten the type of attention you, you think you need and, and then it, it enables you to go in and, and express some of the feelings. That you couldn't face exactly. because, without getting into an argument. Uh, you know, because usually when people come, you do this or you do that, right. then someone else becomes defensive. Absolutely. Yes. And I think more and more, in fact, Dr. Phil always talks about writing. Mm -hmm. And Oprah talks about journal writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very big. Uh, I'm do And I work with journal writing with women who have cancer. At UCLA, mm -hmm. I have a writing workshop once a week. And not that writing heals you, mm -hmm. but it helps you with, it does, not cure you, let's say, but it heals the pain and the hurt and the anger and all the things that you're feeling that you can't discuss with your family. Very cathartic. Very cathartic. Very cathartic. Right. Rachel, when did you realize you had a flair for writing? Oh, probably when I was a kid. I, I remember in high school I uh, wrote a column, like page two was a feature column. Right. And it was funny and I got a lot of laughs and I loved that. Uh, and I guess we do what you know we get attention for positive feedback and I remember people say oh that article was so good and it was usually self-deprecating which is my <laughs> sense of humor and that's how I started and then I decided that I in college I decided that I wanted to be in radio and television writing for radio and television mm -hmm. but then I changed to English and I think that English you know the more you read and you read what you love to write is the best way to learn sometimes just mm -hmm. being a voracious reader mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you've worked with writers to help them build stronger characters how do you go about doing that Rachel well uh, 
I wear two hats. Sometimes writers come in and their characters are very weak and they come in for con consultation because I do script consultations and writing consultations. And usually I don't even look at the script or the book sometimes because the first thing that somebody writes is usually autobiographical. I mean, it really is. And so I look at the writer and what they're putting into it, and that's how I help them with the characters, saying, well, what made you write this? And get them to talk about themselves, because until they know their own motivation, and many times they don't realize right. it's about them, it's all about usually them. never, uh, they won't be able to work on it. So we put the writing aside and I start talking to them about themselves. Because a person cannot separate the writing from the writer. The writer is all the characters. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the writer is the creator. So you can't put yourself way out here and pretend you're writing from your heart. Right. So in that aspect of making it, a, making, helping them create stronger characters, uh -huh. when you find out more about them, does that help you steer them more yes. to analyze themselves better or to possibly steer further away from themselves in, in creating the stronger character? Well, I'll give you an example. Remember when I said to you that I use writing as a healing tool with people who are non-writers? Right. I also do it with writers, and here's a perfect example. A lot of women can't express anger. Cannot. Cannot, mm. especially if they're told little girls don't fight back or they don't yell or scream or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so this woman was writing a wonderful suspense novel and yet she was having her never get angry. In other words, she was the main character and she never got angry at the antagonist who was trying to kill her. Wow. And I said, this is not working. Your character is so passive, da da, da you know, went on and on. And uh, I said, I'll tell you what, let's put this away that you're writing and I want you to do an exercise. I want you to write a very angry, about a situation when you were a little child, you weren't allowed to get angry, and so she wrote that. I said, now I want you to write it and get all your angry feelings out for mm -hmm. this person who would spank you and abuse you. Mm -hmm. And she did, and she wrote this marvelous scene, and therefore it then helped her with her characters, because mm -hmm. suddenly she released what was blocked inside. Now, I could have sat for hours talking about her characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have done a thing have done until it. I turned to the writer and said, okay, let's talk about you and why, why you have a problem with anger. Good for you, yes. Rachel. That's amazing. Yeah, that must what? be so great for it them, is. empowering. Yes, it's empowering, and it, and it also makes them a better writer. Yes. That, is, that is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Can you share with the viewers a little bit about the types of writers you've worked with? Does it truly vary? Is it a oh, it varies. Mm -hmm. I've worked with a famous writers. Obviously, I'm not going to say who right. because of the Point. confidentiality Privilege. of being a therapist. Sure. But a, and I've worked with uh, beginners who never wrote before in their life. And I encourage everybody because I think everybody can write if right. they have the courage to expose who they are. Mm -hmm. And most people are afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll go, oh, I don't want someone to know who I am, or I don't want them to know that I'm writing about them. Nobody, if they're mean, ever thinks it's them anyway. Because mm -hmm. a mean person usually thinks they're nice and charming. Right, right. of course. Charming's an yeah. aspect, I'm sure, for a lot of mean folks. Yeah. Your presentation last month to the South Carolina Writers Workshop included information on the psychology of characters and stories. Share with the viewers a little bit about your presentation to kind of encapsulate it a little bit. Well, I have been teaching for 25 years. I taught at USC Film School and I taught at UCLA and spoken all over the United States and, and internationally. And structure is always stressed, which you must have. I mean, you must have structure. You must know three-act structure if you're writing a screenplay or you must know that all novels have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. So that has been done to death and I realized that you can be a great writer and know structure from beginning to end, but if you don't know how to reach into a character and let that character's heart touch your heart, the audience or the reader, that you're not going to be successful. So I have developed this course based on a book that came out in October called Breathing Life Into Your Characters, How to Give Characters Psychological and Emotional Depth. Mm -hmm. And that's what my workshop was on. And it was helping the, read, uh, the writers learn about their characters by doing a character's backstory, by finding out what type of neuroses they have, 
by finding out what type of role they played in their family and uh, not just, oh, my character has red hair and blue eyes and is six mm -hmm. feet tall, mm -hmm. but really going into the psychology of the character. But the interesting thing is, uh, when I did this workshop, a writer said, you know, this is really self-therapy for the writer. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized, my heavens, of course it is. At that moment, the writer can't do anything for their characters that they can't think about for themselves. Right. Right. So they answer the question for themselves, what is their backstory? So if you were in, in my class, uh, I would say to you, what is your backstory? How many siblings did you have? Were you the popular one? Were you the quiet one? Were you the troublemaker? And that gets you a whole lot of information that you can put into your characters. Oh, yes. Because you aren't going to put into your characters my backstory. Right. You're going to put your backstory right. into your characters right. and then embellish it. So it's very exciting. And Breathing Life into Your Characters is your book. Yes. Is that something that uh, viewers can get a copy of? Is it? Uh... It's in all the bookstores, right. Borders and Barnes and Noble. It's in all the bookstores now. Okay. And Writer's Digest is the publisher. Fantastic. We'll have to make sure and pick up a copy. Some authors say rewriting is the most critical part of shaping a story. Rachel, would you agree with that? And what do you tell authors about rewriting? Well, first of all, what I tell them about writing, and I'll digress for a minute, mm -hmm. is that you must get it down. And it doesn't have to be right. Just get the story down. Mm -hmm. Because many people have come to see me with poorly written stories, but if they had nothing written because it wasn't right, R-I-G-H-D, right. uh, we'd have nothing to talk about. Mm -hmm. Rewriting is putting the layers down. Mm -hmm. You know, writing is getting down the bones, and now your rewriting is the skin and the mm -hmm. heart and the blood and the sweat and the tears, and yes, you have to be willing to rewrite mm -hmm. because it's through rewriting that you find things that you never realized before and you get depth to your characters mm -hmm. by rewriting. Rewriting is so valuable. Which literary characters come to mind if I was to ask you to describe those most vivid and memorable in your mind? Oh, well, there's so many, but I love Tennessee Williams characters. I love Blanche and Stella and Stanley. And I also love uh, Margaret Mitchell. I love Gone with the Wind, Scarlet. And I was saying, and Red and Ashley and Melanie. And I was saying, could you see Melanie to show you how important a character is? Mm -hmm. Red couldn't play Ashley. I mean, Clark Gable couldn't play Ashley. It would be a different story. Mm -hmm. He couldn't play Ashley Wilkes, and Olivia de Havilland couldn't, in the film, couldn't play, uh, you know, Scarlett O'Hara. So it shows you how important the characters are, because it wouldn't be the same story. Or Woody Allen could never play Rocky in a That's movie. Right. I mean, it wouldn't be Rocky. So the plot really comes from the characters, and you have to create characters who have layers of emotions and who are contradictory, just like we are. And Scarlet certainly was contradictory. You know, one minute she would be helping, the next minute she's trying to steal her best friend's husband. And right. She's complex, and that's what we are as people. We contradict ourselves. So those layers of emotion and the contradictory aspects would be what makes those characters most memorable exactly. for Rachel Ballard. Exactly, mm -hmm. and for everybody. Mm -hmm. How does writing personally help writers in their own lives? Well, like I said earlier, if a person uh, cannot express anger in their own lives, as I was talking to you about that writer, and they write something from the past, and they get their angry feelings out, it helps them incorporate this as part of who they are, and so they don't have to be afraid of angry feelings, that they don't have to be afraid of feelings that they were taught as a child not to express. So they aren't going to have a nervous breakdown or have addictions or things like that because through writing it opens up many things. And that's with non-writers. I gave you an example of a writer before, previously, mm -hmm. how it helped a writer get angry characters. But it can help non-writers. Writing helps by getting feelings out that they aren't even aware of or situations. I'll have people write something. I'll do relaxations with people and then I'll have them write and they'll go, oh my God, I didn't even remember that, you know, from childhood. Right. But the things that you don't remember are always there. Oh. And they say the things that you don't remember, they can get you. So writing is a way of catharsis, as you said, and it's healing. 
It's healing pain from the past. And that aspect with most writers, or with all writers, having that sense of autobiographical in nature and mm -hmm. virtually everything they put down, can an author write about a character and not have a little bit of themselves in it? I don't think so. Huh. Even the villains and even the lustful, sensual ones, even if people are Puritans, I feel that that's a part of their inside and that the real writing comes from the inside out. In fact, my logo for writing is a heart with a pen, you know, pen drawing the heart. And I think people really have to get to the heart. And we are many people, you know. We have all sides, and if a person wants to write a mystery or a suspense, you can't do that without getting into the dark side of yourself, which is your greedy side and your lustful side and your envious side. Uh, we don't like to admit it, but a good writer will be open to all aspects of themselves. You heard her say it. The words are simple. Get to the heart. Getting to the heart, and it happens virtually every day when an author begins to pen something about a character. A little bit of their own heart comes out. Dr. Rachel Ballin, thanks so much for being My with us pleasure. this morning. My pleasure. Thank you. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Mary Eady of The Wordsmith and Dr. Rachel Ballin, the author of the newly published Breathing Life into Your Characters, for making today's Carolina people so special.